Let's talk to Gaurav Sharma. He's a Forbes contributor and a oil market analyst. Very good morning to you, Gaurav. Good to be back. Okay, let's talk oil. Um, is it going up, down, sideways? Well, I'll tell you what, we were here a fortnight ago and I, and I said, I just don't buy all these city forecasts of uh, you know, six month targets of $82.5 and $75 and what have you. And my simple reason was there's still too much oil out there. And lo and behold, there was an almighty crash, it plummeted below 70. It's doing about, as we, as we go on air, it's doing about $64 thereabouts. And West Texas is, is back above 60, but we had a little bit of a, uh, a mini sell-off, shall I say, just to give market, uh, give, put a corrective mechanism in there. And I still think, my, still my average price for West Texas is about $60, and about for, for Brent is still about 65 Now, let's have some food for thought. Let's, let's give the bulls their due. Let's talk about what's in there for the bulls. Indian demand. It's uh, according to Reuters data just published yesterday. It's touched about 4.93 million barrels per day. Uh, it's overtaken Japan. It's, it's now the third largest importer. Now, India is the only thing that's going right for the bulls right now. Well, Chinese demand is flatlining, not, not, not quite like 2012. The others, the Americans are turning less and less to the international markets for obvious reasons, their yep. own domestic production. And, and the other two, Japan and South Korea, out of the big five, they aren't importing as much. Now, that said, the global economy for the first time the financial crisis pretty much across all zones is growing uniformly. So the IEA, OPEC, whomsoever's demand forecast, oil demand growth forecast you go with is about one point, we'll probably consume 1.7 to 1.5 to 1.7 million barrels per day more than what the demand growth was last year. All of that growth, I repeat, all of that growth can be serviced by production growth in non-OPEC alone. So, you know, that gives you some sort of a flavor. So people say shale is a fad, you know, it's fake, it's this. These companies have financial problems, that their cash flow problems are there. Agreed. But whatever you say, the Americans are pumping at a steady or whack. So they're above 10 million uh, barrels per day. So are the Saudis and the Russians. You tell me if that's not a sort of a flattish market, yep. then what can you say? Okay. So let's talk about making some money now. Um, BP and Shell. Should I have those in my portfolio? Well, you should for two reasons. Well, don't have too much of an exposure given how volatile the oil markets are. Yep. But if you are looking at dividend payouts, it's a very interesting note out there doing the rounds by, by Morgan Stanley, and they haven't paid me to bring them up. But nonetheless, it brings up a very mute point. It says, regardless of where the oil price is, these guys, and we can include Total in the mix if you're venturing beyond UK, have streamlined their operations, their cost of optimizations and all that, that they will still end up paying a dividend, although Shell being Shell, it's not, it never failed to pay a dividend in the Second World War, yep. will probably beat BP. That said, if you look at price targets, there, there's a very optimistic price target out there from Barclays. We're talking about a 30 pounds for, uh, uh, for, uh, for a Shell share. But I think about 2850 is more par. BP is a very uh, interesting one. Now, BP went up to 481p uh, just after its interim results, but then, of course, retreated as the oil price fell. Uh, I would keep an eye on BP, and my target, mine alone, nobody else, is probably in the region about 550 to 560. There's some optimistic ones out there, about 615, 620. But I think that is my price target for one reason alone. They've had two new developments in the North Sea. We thought BP was giving up on the North Sea, and suddenly, bang, they come out and say they've got, they found, they've got two finds west of Shetlands. So that's there. I personally interviewed uh, BP's chief scientist, uh, Dame Angela Strang, and she said that how BP is adapting is that what Bob Dudley is saying that he wants to target a $30 break even, they're, in a, they're approaching that at a very steady pace. So, so the target is to have a $30 break even for BP by 2021, and they don't care where the oil price is. They're just going ahead with all the streamlining, all your digitization, your blockchain, uh, you know, your, your optimized contracts, uh, process efficiencies, not just, you know, lowering headcounts and all the rest of it. So. In that case, I think BP would be a, a fairly decent punt, but then that's just my personal opinion. Understood. On that note, Gaurav, thank you very much indeed.